This is Buramino, the newest of the five refugee camps in Doloado, Ethiopia. A year ago, it didn't exist. Today, it is home to more than 23,000 people and still growing. WFP is feeding them all, just as we're doing in the other four Doloado camps, now home to nearly 160,000 people. Last year at this time, up to 2,000 people a day were arriving at this site, fleeing the famine in southern Somalia. This year, the numbers are much lower, and the children are in much better nutritional state than they were last year. But since mid-May, we have seen an increase in the number of newly arriving refugees. WFP and its humanitarian partners are ready to be able to provide whatever support people need. By the end of 2011, a combination of good rainfall and an influx of humanitarian assistance put the region on the road to recovery. But that progress was extremely fragile, and this year, in some of the same areas, the rains have failed again, and insecurity continues. Famine is not expected to return to the region, but many of these families just have not had enough time to recover yet. I used to have 20 sheep and about 10 cows, but now they've all died. Throughout Ethiopia, WFP is feeding nearly 330,000 refugees and more than half a million in neighboring Kenya. Those numbers continue to grow. WFP and its partners continue to be there for them. In addition to general food rations for refugees, we're helping young children and their mothers recover from malnutrition with specialized products. Getting these kids the right food at the right time is helping their bodies and minds develop so they can build a brighter future for themselves and their families. It's harvest time in Ivory Coast, but this rice is not destined for the dinner table. This women's cooperative is producing high quality rice seeds, which they sell to a government run seed bank. In a country reading from a decade of civil war, these farmers are playing a key role in reducing poverty. Madame Nandia Fofana is president of this co-op. They started growing rice for seeds two years ago and are already reaping the benefits. Before, it was only suffering, suffering, suffering. There wasn't any food to eat. But now, selling these rice seeds, we can buy food and we are doing well. Nandi's group is growing Witte 9, a productive and more pest-resilient breed of rice, and have almost doubled their yield and their profits. For Nandia, a widow with three children, more earnings means more independence. Especially in a country where women are responsible for growing over half the food, but rely on men for access to land. Thanks to this rice, I can build a house, buy a motorcycle, and can do what men can do. Now we are the same as men. To ensure the seeds are of high quality, Nandi needs a government certificate and must adhere to strict regulations from the choice of terrain to the correct way of drying the seeds. Together with 30 other rice producers from different zones, Nandia was selected to attend a two-day intensive training course and had the opportunity to share experiences with fellow rice growers. So far, over 800 farmers have been trained to grow quality rice seeds. All seeds produced are sent to a government warehouse. Here, machines separate the good grains from the bad. After a third and final quality check, they are stored until next planting season, when they will be distributed to thousands of farmers. After 10 years of use, the quality of the seeds has dramatically degenerated. This training has enabled farmers to get good quality seeds and has meant that their yield has increased greatly. It is not only rice. Maize, yams and cassava cultivations are all being improved through this project, which is part of the European Union's 1 billion euro food facility and is managed by IFAD, 
the UN agency dedicated to rural development. Taking advantage of the good prospects for security and political stability, project activities are making up for lost time. In Ivory Coast, fighting poverty goes hand in hand with keeping peace. The Republic of the Gambia, a small West African country on the southernmost border of the Sahel region, has suffered severe crop failures this year. Last year saw a drop of more than 70% in total crop production due to poor rains. Two bad years and soaring food prices have left more than half the country's population without enough food. <laughs> People are really struggling now to get food. If you have 10 people in your family, you spend your time thinking about where you can get food. It is our biggest problem. And how can we grow another crop next year? What will we use for seeds? It is a big problem. And we've already sold off all the farming tools that we had. When food and resources are this scarce, nothing can be wasted and every effort to add to the value of what little you have makes a real difference. In a world where one in seven people go hungry, roughly one third of global food production gets lost or wasted. And along with the food that nobody eats, we also lose the water, soil and other resources that we use to grow it. Food waste is mainly a problem in industrialized countries while food losses are more typical of the developing world, often due to inadequate infrastructure. Here in The Gambia, the Food and Agriculture Organization is working with farmers to tackle the problem. We are also addressing the food losses through the value addition, proper storage, and also making sure that there are market outlets, so that the product, since they are highly perishable, and you don't have proper storage facilities, you can quickly sell them. Bad storage facilities can result in infestation by insects and rats, but around 12,000 people will soon be able to store their produce properly in these metal silos, specially designed for use by families or the whole community. These farmers have learned how to cure their onions by leaving them out to dry before bagging them. This will ensure that they don't rot and can be stored for up to six months. And the FAO project is also working with women's associations to establish a modern, competitive and commercially vibrant food processing sector. Hibiscus flowers, which were often thrown away when preparing the leaves for cooking, are now processed to become jam and juice and are an important source of income. This initiative helps us be more self-sufficient we can invest more in our farming, get better yields, and live in better conditions. As smallholders, we work hard, but we also reap the benefits. All we have is agriculture, so we are interested in anything that can make us more self-sufficient. Thanks to effective marketing techniques, the products are being sold throughout the country. This additional source of income makes a real difference for small-scale farmers whose livelihoods are threatened by poor harvests. And the impact of the project will be felt for years to come, because with their new skills, many women, like Unde, are looking forward to starting their own companies. We have seen Unde had said that, you know, the skills she had developed um, joining this group you know, she can use it to develop herself into a big entrepreneur, and that's what she's working towards. FAO and partners are working together on the Save Food Global Initiative on food loss and waste reduction. If we are to eradicate hunger, everybody involved in food supply chains, from producers to consumers, must change management practices, technologies and behavior. For Hungry Planet, this is Boudicca Downs.